control. I like the definition I found in a commentary. We must be sober and moderate in our love to and use of the good things of this life. And if we have a right understanding and knowledge of outward comforts, we shall see that our, their worth and usefulness are vastly inferior to those of spiritual mercies. Our desire for God and his promises should fuel us, not the things of this world, which when acquired are still empty promises. Only God can provide lasting joy. The fourth trait is endurance. Romans 5.3 says, we also rejoice in our afflictions because we know that affliction produces endurance. We're not meant to live a problem-free life. We cannot always take the easy way out. And when we do things or stumble upon challenging events, we have an opportunity to gain endurance. And the opposite of enduring is quitting. And no one wants to be labeled a quitter along with a sloth. The fifth trait is godliness. A commentary said this, when Christians bear afflictions patiently or with endurance, they get an experimental knowledge of the loving kindness of their heavenly father. And hereby they are brought to a childlike fear and reverential love wherein true godliness consists. When we rely on God through afflictions and endure, we experience God. And no, we don't become like God, but we get to know and understand him more. The final two traits are very important in combating the slothful mindset. The sixth trait is brotherly affection. Brotherly affection means tender affection to all our fellow Christians. Loving our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ is good and produces joy, but sometimes it's not always easy. When a brother or sister in Christ offends me and I have to go to church with them each Sunday, it's so much easier to just let it slide, keep the peace, and avoid that awkward conf confrontation. But by taking that easy way out, we let our resentment of that offense fester. And fester is an ugly word for an ugly process. So there are no good outcomes for things that fester. Loving our brothers and sisters in Christ can be hard work, especially when different personalities come together. The last trait is love. If loving and caring for your brother and sister in Christ was not hard enough, add to that loving the goodwill of all mankind. I just watched a YouTube video of a Christian man named Todd White talking with a young man who was a Satanist. Now Todd White, he goes out and, and basically evangelizes, tell people his, stor his story, um, and he was a drug addict for 22 years and then Christ changed his life around. So he's talking with this young man who was a Satanist, and Todd shared his testimony to the young man of how he met Jesus and how Jesus completely rocked his world. And at the end of the testimony, he told the Satanists that he loved him. And he asked to pray over him. So Todd pulled the young man's head to his. And this young man was wearing like horns, and he was all dressed up. Um, so complete with horns, he pulled this young man's head to his. And he prayed over him. He didn't try to convert him. He just asked for God's blessing on this young man, and a blessing on his talents that he had. Todd even said, God is the one that does the saving. We are just his vessels. He goes on to say that he believes the Holy Spirit will be after this young man. And he prays that God will just send Christian people into his life, wherever he is at. To me, this is a great example of love. Loving people where they are at, and not trying to change them so that you can love them. I believe this is the hardest trait of all. Verse 8 in 2 Peter tells us that while we possess these qualities in increasing measure, they keep us from being useless and unfruitful. You know that you are not being slothful when you examine the fruit that your life is producing. 
When our lives are slothful, we produce the not so good fruit of discontent, discontentment, cynicism, laziness, etc. A life well lived combating slothfulness with these traits has many good fruits, and one of them is joy. I read a quote about joy from Paul Lind Escamilla that says, while happiness may stop at my doorstep, joy cannot be so easily contained. Joy broadens its reach to embrace others with its disposition. When we fully seek God and work to put good traits in our lives, joy is a natural byproduct. When we know the, the will of God and work to make it happen, even when it's challenging and not fun, when we accomplish it and get to the other side, there's joy and the satisfaction of playing a part in God's plan. I know that when I go through challenging times in life, there's so much joy in knowing that I have endured and made it through with God's help. So let me close our time with a quote and a story. This quote is from Edmund Burke, and he says this, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. To me, this is a good summary of what sloth produces. When we don't do what is right, stand up for someone getting picked on, using our precious time to help someone in need. Whatever the scenario, if we don't do anything, evil will triumph. And God gives us what we need to do what is right and to take action. And when we obey God in what we are prompted to do, joy follows. Now when I first started thinking about this text and topic, I couldn't get out of my head this really meaningful experience that I had. It's a time in my life where joy bubbled up through a very challenging season of death for me. I attended Christopher Dock High School, which was a 20, or 30 minute drive from my home. I don't remember why, but I needed to return to school in the evening. And instead of staying at school, doing homework, putzing around with my friends, I decided to go visit my grandfather and great aunt who lived at Souderton Home. My grandmother had just recently passed away, so I knew they could use a visit. But what I didn't expect was the rich conversation that I had with my great aunt. With tears in our eyes, we reminisced about my grandmother and engaged in a hard conversation about the Mennonite church. I didn't expect to learn about my grandfather's experiences growing up and to end the afternoon looking through his yearbook. Sorry. That afternoon could have been so boring and even wasted. I could have completely forgotten about that day but I chose to do something worthwhile and rather challenging for me to do at the time. It was a big step for me to visit family without my parents there. I was still very immature and learning how to talk with adults, but the joy I received from that day, I still can feel. I remember leaving the home thanking God for the immense blessing I had just received. Praise God that when we do hard things and combat sloth, there is joy at the end. Joy does not mean prosperity. Sometimes when we do hard things, it seems like our lives fall apart. God's joy is more of an inner peace and contentment. It exceeds any happy feelings that we have. And what a blessing to partake of the joy of the Lord. Now let me close with a prayer of confession. Lord God, forgive us when we are tempted to take the easy way out. Help us to have the courage to fight for truth and goodness. We confess that sometimes it's easier to not care, to not participate, and to avoid the world. But your love demands participation and engagement. Help us to adopt the traits of goodness, knowledge, self-control, endurance, godliness, brotherly affection, and love, so that we can experience good fruit and deep, abounding joy. Amen. Amen. <laughs>